G'day YouTube, my name's Lance, welcome to Bundy Bear Shed. This looks a bit different for Bundy Bear Shed, doesn't it? Um, we do a lot of tractor videos and last Sunday um, I was just sitting in the chair, I'd done a heap of filming, I'd filmed doing up the, trans the hydraulic pump on the TE20 and I was just having a break and this engine next to me here is a 1920 International M and it's an igniter engine. Um, it doesn't have a spark plug in the head, um, it has an igniter and it has a generator up the back there and it, it, um, it, it causes a spark as in a current and as the, as the voltage rises and it goes down um, in the sine wave, um, you time the generator so that when that voltage is at the peak it just, this arm here pushes forward, hits this bar here it momentarily closes the points in the head, then when it flashes back, it pops a little spark and away it goes. But this engine, I've had this engine since um, 19, uh, 2012, and in Bundaberg here, we had, a, we had a workshop, Bundaberg Field Service and Queensland Tractor Spares over at Collins Street. And we'd had the shed for years, and this big flood come through. Like, the shed had never had water in it in... 25, 30 years, but we had this big flood come through and it put 1.9 metres through the shed. And I hadn't bought this long off a of fella. I had had it running, but on the Australia Day weekend 2013, which is the end of January in Australia here, this big flood come through and um, it rolled us. <laughs> and if you have a look, um, just out of interest, if you are interested, um, on my Facebook page, Lance Maskell, um, on my Facebook page, there's an album there of the flood, and you can just see, I've put any photos I come across of the flood there, just to give you an indication, but whether you look or not, doesn't matter, it's up to you. But anyway, at the time, we had a bit of help, and I've got two good mates who are still my friends today, um, Davey Recco and Paulie Irwin, and they come to give us a hand to tidy up, and um, they're old machinery people, old machinery blokes, and so they picked on this to sort out and drain the fuel out and rush, run a bit of fuel through the tank and tidy it up in general. But when you go through a flood like that, um, you have to get your business up and running. So once they sort of oiled this up and, and did a few jobs for us on it, this engine has been sat over in the corner of my shed and forgotten about since 2013. And now it's, what, September 2021. So it's been quite a while. But... Um, I did often turn the flywheels over. If I was going past or shifting it around or something, I would turn the flywheels over and make sure it was okay. So last Sunday, I was, I've been looking at this engine for a while thinking I should get that running again, you know, before it's too late. It's, it's, it's gone past its use-by date because of the flood water. And you can see the staining here. Um, I'm looking for an idea to tidy that staining up. It's got beautiful original paint on it. On the other side, you can just see a, just barely see where it had kerosene written on the side of it. So I'd like to keep this old patina probably. And so last Sunday, I was just having a break and I thought I'd just feel like playing with an old engine. So I, I got this old girl out and um, the igniter here had seized. The points wouldn't work. So I pulled that out, freed that up. Um, the gasket's no good, but through the week I drew one up and I've laser cut myself out a, a few new gaskets for here. And um, the generator seems to work. The fuel pump was seized. There's a little fuel pump down in here and it, it pumps the fuel up this pipe here. And so you have a little reservoir in the carby here and the overflow runs back down here, back into the fuel tank through this pipe here. And... Um, so the fuel pump was seized, so I freed that up. Um, someone at one stage had a brass ball down the bottom and there's a check valve and a stainless steel ball up the top as a check valve. So I pulled the pump apart, I polished everything up, I replaced the two balls with brand new brass ones I had here and to stop it leaking around the shaft, I grabbed a mop, a nice new mop, and um, I chopped a few strands out of the mop and. Um, rubbed grease into it and all that. Sometimes I rub some sunlight soap into those and it works just as well. So I got the, um, <clears throat> I got the fuel pump working. 
So I cranked the engine up, I filled it with oil and did the grease caps and squirted oil everywhere, checked what was moving and what wasn't. And um, I cranked it up last Sunday and I had it running. And for those who watch, um, who look at my Facebook page, Lance Maskell, or um, on the Bundy Bears Shed Facebook page, um, I put a little video of it running. And it was running too fast and all that, but I didn't care. I just, yeah, I got it running. And that was the, that was the main, um, my main concern with this little engine. So I had water in the hopper, probably up to well, here somewhere, I don't know. And um, so I run the engine for a while and I thought, right, I had to replace this gasket this weekend. Um, so I left the water in the hopper, no problem. And I thought this carby here, I've got bead blasters in that here. I was going to pop this carby apart, just have a look at it. Bead blast like around the bottom because they do get a bit of a crusty crud down the bottom of these carbies. And on these throttle screws, um, there's a, a aluminium muck metal type um, siphon seat down inside there. And they often um, start breaking away and, and become loose. So I've got a couple of new ones we made here as well. So I cranked it up. Now this cap here is for the kerosene. We're running it on just um, premium unleaded. This one's for the water. So when you run it on kerosene, well this taps kerosene, and this middle one you can put a bit of water in there when it's under load to stop it knocking and it takes a little bit of water out of the hopper and puts it through into the venturi to take out knocking. So anyway, all was well <laughs> and last night I was sitting up, young fella Tim come over yesterday evening, Friday evening and we were just sitting in the doorway there having a beer and I was just rocking the flywheels back and forth and didn't worry about anything, you know, just thinking, oh yeah, that's nice and free. But this morning I came into the shed and there's a puddle of water under the engine here. And I thought, that's funny, it wasn't there yesterday. So, um, so I, I got the engine, I've moved it up into my working bay here and I pushed the inlet valve in, it's an atmospheric inlet, pushed that in, wound the engine over and I, you can't quite see that, but there's water dribbling out the exhaust and I had water shoot out the top here, out of the carby. So for some reason, while the engine was sitting, we've got water. I've got that right up onto compression at the moment. You can see, you can see it bouncing back, but you can hear a little bit of water around. And in the crankcase at the back, it's got a bit of water. So it's one of those things, I left water in it um, on purpose because I was going to use it this weekend. It's not freezing, it's fine to do that. And for some reason we have water in the cylinder. So this morning I've got the camera set up. We're going to have a little poke around this little motor and, um, and see. I've got another three of these possibly. I'd probably have another 20 engines in the shed here I suppose. Um, this is a three horsepower International M igniter. Um, I've got probably seven or eight one and a half horsepowers, probably three of these, one six horsepower on a cart, one big ten horsepower. So I've got the full set, but I haven't been playing with engines much for a while. And so, but anyway, today we're going to find out why we got water into the cylinder. And just having a fiddle before, this is a brass tube and this is the oiler. So you put oil in here, you lift the oiler up and I've had that oiler, because it hadn't run for a while, I had it up putting a lot of oil in, you know, too much probably, but that's fine. And, but if you look here, that's a brass tube going down and that goes through the water hopper into the cylinder and there's a BSP thread in there. And that feels like that may have a crack in it. Like they're normally more rigid than that. So perhaps that's our problem. Um, we've obviously got a carby full of water because we had water shoot out through here when I wound it over this morning. So I'll try and get the camera set up, get my ugly dial out of it, and I'm going to pull the carby right apart and overhaul the carby. I'll have to pull the igniter out. I've, I've laser cut some new igniter gaskets. I'm going to laser cut, draw up and laser cut the gaskets for here. 
Like in Australia, these international aims overseas, um, I've dealt with um, Starbolt um, in America for engine parts. You couldn't fault them, they great service. And I have a few spare gaskets and decals and all that stuff here. But um, in Australia, the freight kills you coming in from America. So um, those who watch my Kangaroo Stew series know I've bought a laser. And so um, I'm drawing a lot of little gaskets up and just laser cutting them. So um, I'm going to take the time and laser cut every gasket for this little International M. Um, for two reasons. One, they're hard to get. You know, well, not hard to get, but you've got to fly them in. And um, two, it's a drawing exercise for myself so I can learn a little bit more about drawing so so I'll stop flapping my gums I started unpulling oh unpulling pulling off the carby um, off the top of the engine here um, there's a bolt each side I'll undo the fuel lines we'll get the carby off and have a look um, and clean it out regardless it does need it the other day it was running quite fast so I suspect that the governor is a bit sticky and the generator when i run it i run it on a battery in a coil so you can put a 12 volt car battery there run it through the primary windings of a car coil to here and because the points are open all the time it doesn't matter you're not draining your battery but when when you push when this little lever pushes forward there your points shut momentarily and open up and there's your arc so i run it with the battery for a while then i took the wire off the battery and believe it or not, that bloody L-type magneto run the engine. But whether it, run it, whether it was going to run it long time with the magnetism or not, I don't know. Towards the end, it started backfiring a little bit. So I was, I was suspecting that it had lost a bit of go. But I've got spare L-type magnetos here in my um, cupboard that I've got off other engines and things like that. So um, it's a bit of a change of pace for Bundy Bear's shed. But... Um, yeah, look, we might as well deal with this now. It's, it's something of interest. Um, I don't know how many of my followers are tractor people and how many are engines and how many just like old stuff. So follow along. I'll see if I can make some sense out of it all, eh? Okay, I'm sitting over at the head of the engine here on a milk crate. They're just the right height. So I'm going to start with popping this line off here. Now, this line on this side of the carby that you can't really see it comes down here to the hopper and it supplies the water supply for this Venturi set up here. So I don't know how much if water is going to come out. I've left water in the hopper. It's probably up to so high. I've left water in there just so um, it may give us an idea of where it's coming from. It may help. So there's a little bit of well, there's a little bit of oil in there, so it might be coming off the top of the um, the top of the hopper there. I may have to drain the hopper if it becomes too messy. Now this fellow underneath here, um, he's the return from the fuel. So the kerosene mix originally would have come up here and gone down through this bloke and return to tank and this pipe here has just started to piss water out <laughs> bloody thing so I will drain the tank properly I'll take this governor linkage off that didn't have a pin in it for some reason so I'll take that off and that way this pipe I can I can push it around and just let that drain into a tank so I need to find something to pop that in. Okay, I've got a bucket down here now, so that can dribble away without any harm being caused. Now we'll grab a 5.8 spanner and pop this main feed line. This is a line that comes up from the fuel pump. These are pretty common. Geez, they must have sold a lot of these, old international harvester. Okay, so that's the return. Now this one here, just for interest's sake, if I pop over the top here and pump the fuel pump, I'll just check that's all still working. 
And there's gasoline, petrol. Fuel pump's working, not leaking. Life is good. So that's lasted a week, so it's out of warranty now. <laughs> okay. This is the choke plate. So I've undone the nut on this side of the carb here. I can undo the one on the other. What's that? That's 11 16th AF. And the top of the carb should just lift off. Sometimes the whole carb might come. Yep, it is. The whole kit and caboodle. And you can see there's water in there. Okay, there's an interesting point. Now, this gasket here, where that sits on the top there, and this little pipe comes through, when we hook this pipe up, that should introduce water into this carby here. But it's been blocked off, so they've cut a gasket and they've blocked that off so the water doesn't get into the carb. So that little hole there, that's silicon. Yeah, I hate silicon. So the water would have come up through here in this hole here and look that's silicon all the way in that hole. Looks like I've got myself a job. I may not necessarily run the water and I may even make a gasket that has that blocked off just like this one because um, power kerosene in Australia is very hard to find. Um, and something I'm going to try with this engine is for the kerosene in the fuel tank here where we're running gasoline now, you can put, the idea with this big plug here is you put a bit of gasoline in there, a bit of petrol in there, there's a drain for it. You put some in there, open this up and you get the engine running and the engine runs on the, on the petrol, gets warm, and by the time that happens, this pump has pumped uh, kerosene power, kero, um, up this pipe into this chamber here. Then you open this up, say, one and a half turns, three quarters of a turn, whatever it takes. You open this up and it starts running on the kerosene. And then you close the petrol off because you'll eventually use up the petrol in there. So on the tractors, people are putting, um, say they want to mix up a five litre of power kerosene to run the Fergie tractors on. Well, they're actually, um, they run four litres of power kerosene to one litre of petrol. So, and it would give it a nice smell. So we might try that just for the fun of it. If it doesn't work, we can drain it out. So the butterfly here is nice and free. That hasn't been stuck. And we might pop this carby up on the bench and we'll just pull it apart up on the bench and we'll just have a bit of a look ourselves and see what we got. <laughs> 